And, and I, I talk about this all the time because I think the biggest problem facing the black community is not police brutality by any regards. It's like that. Mm-hmm. If I had to make a list of 100 things yeah. that were impacting the black community, police brutality wouldn't even be on the top 100. Let me it's, tell you it's, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a scam. It's no, a leftist scam. It's, 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 Hold on, it's let me finish. A it's a leftist yeah. scam. It's, I truly believe it's a leftist scam. It's not helping. It's not helping them what's, it, helping whatsoever. And it's actually reversing and, and harming our community more because what the left does all the time is they seize a new show pony that they want us to be obsessed with and looking at all the time. At every Every four years so that they can control our vote and they can make us emotional. And in 2016, it was the myth. Of, and when I say myth of police brutality, I mean that when you look at the rate, white men and Hispanic men are being shot down at a higher rate, not more of them, a higher rate than black men. OK, so unless there's a Hispanic lives matter. So that means to me and the timing of it is always suspicious. When all of a sudden we're supposed to be in the street protesting, it's right before election cycles. They release some information and black people are supposed to be outraged. Our community is too emotional. Point blank, period. We have to start to be rational and say, hmm. Now, I know that right now is election cycle, and every single night on CNN, they're showing me images of black men dying. Why would that be? Why is it that after Trump won, those images magically went away? Nobody cared about Black Lives Matter movement. I haven't, I can't find CNN doing all the specials. It was like every day, prime time was a Black Lives Matter thing. Trump won, they were like, all right, bye. Then they went on to rape, and they went on to Me Too, and they went on to trying to stop this and that. And I think that that is the biggest problem in the black community is that we don't realize that we have been emotionally manipulated, and it's all for votes. Nobody cares. First and foremost, I'm making this video because I 100 thousand percent agree with Candace Owens. I may not agree with particularly her political views or whatever the case may be, you know, I don't have to agree with everything that she stands for or whoever she's with or whatever the case may be. Despite all of that, I respect her as a fellow black person. I respect her in terms of her being unapologetic for her views and the things that she speak out upon and even despite Whatever you want to say about her being a Republican and standing up for Trump and all this type of stuff, despite all of that, however you want to agree with it, because personally I don't care that she stands for Trump. Nonetheless, I stand 100% with most of the stuff that she has to say, especially when she's going back and forth with these particular black people that have something to say concerning her views and her perceptions upon things. You know, because you have a lot of people who are in the so-called conscious community, pro-black community, and they think that, you know, that black people are going to be saved somehow by this miraculous messiah or there's going to be some race war that's going to go down. We're going to win. You know, like, you, you have black people out here who feel like that there's going to be a black utopia. You know, we're going to all go back to Africa and everything's going to be fine and dandy. You know, and... That's just so far from the truth. I have come to the realization this year officially that there is no hope for the masses of black people. There is no hope for the masses of black people. You have to look after yourself. You have to look after your own. I mean, if if they didn't get it when Marcus Garvey was here, if they didn't get it when Elijah Muhammad was here, if they didn't get it when Malcolm X was here, if they didn't get it when the, the Black Panther Party was here, you know, and Khalid Muhammad and so on and so forth, if they didn't get it when these great men and these great organizations came up, you know, and were trying to establish something for black people, then they're not going to get it now, especially in this day and age. This is why I tell black people to do for self, all right? Do for yourself. Save yourself, all right? You know, look after you and your family. Don't pay no mind to the masses that want to be associated with Black Lives Matter movement and and all this other type of stuff that they want to do out concerning the masses. You know, you have to look after your own and your own people. You know, in terms of your family, your close ones, and your kinfolk. Nonetheless, I agree wholeheartedly with what Candace Owens has to say in this video because she brings up some very miraculous points that I can't argue, and I'm pretty sure you can't argue as well. She brings up that there is a cycle, there is a continuous cycle that always happens before election time where there's this commotion that goes out and about because of a particular news article or something that's that's happening and it gets propagated, right? It gets propagated, exaggerated um, to the masses, to the news, and then they provoke people to be up in arms and protests and all this other type of stuff, right? And so this happens throughout every election time, all right? This happened 
recently with George Floyd, happened with, with Mike Brown, a little before that happened with Trayvon Martin, so on and so forth. So you see this cycle that they're, they're playing on the emotions of black people and she's made it very plain and clear that we are very emotional and us being emotional does not get us anywhere. Us being emotional does not get us anywhere. You ever be uh, us fellas, you ever be in a relationship with a woman, you cannot talk to her. You can't even have a conversation with her if her emotions are running rampant. If you're trying to have a dialogue with her but she's trying to argue with you and her emotions are, you know, deciding you know, this and that and the third, and she's leading to conclusions and she won't hear you out. You can't have a conversation with somebody that's in their emotions and can't think logically. If they can't accept something logically, you know, there's no use in having that conversation and even trying to conform a form of compromise with that person. This is the same thing with black people. They feed off of our emotions. And the best way to do to feed off of the emotions of black people is not to make them more mad, but in ways you, you give them a form of tokenism here. You, you make organizations that they can lash out their emotions there. You know, they, they have the sympathetic uh, liberal type white people that, oh, we're sorry. And we're going to put Black Lives Matter on the street. We're going to give you another Martin Luther King Avenue. We're going to put Harriet Tubman on the dollar bill. You know, we're, we're going to have the first black mayor, the first black senator. And you know, all this stuff to make you feel good. All these advertisements they have out here with voting, make sure you have your voice and we can vote out white supremacy. We can vote out white supremacy November 3rd and we can make sure that white supremacy does not win. And we all, the people, we have the power to make that happen. Vote now. Let your voice be made known. I wanna ask every single American, no matter what party you normally vote for, to please take a moment to pause. Click off the news. Think about how you felt over these last four years, how quickly things have turned. And then think about what the next four years could mean for our country's future. The message we will send to our children about who we are and what we truly value. Think about what- I'm sorry, I gotta put my two cents on this. This is ridiculous. I wish, I wish I would try to hug somebody through it. I'm sorry, you, you can continue. What would possibly compel you to accept this level of chaos, violence, and confusion under this president and be willing to watch our country continue to spiral out of control? Because we can no longer pretend that we don't know exactly who and what this president stands for. To function exactly as it is, we must respond with bold action. This is our country too. We can build new systems that do what they should. You know, like all this stuff to cater to your emotions and you just eat it up. You just eat it up because you can't think for yourself. And she's making very great points here, making very great points here, and I agree wholeheartedly with what she has to say. I don't have to agree with her political views and her political stance, you know what I'm saying, to uh, support what she has to say. A lot of things with black people, we're so divisive in terms of who we want to uh, politically stand for, whether we're Democrat or Republican, or whatever the case that you wanna identify with, that we can't even associate with each other or have a, a mutual agreement with each other or associate with one another because of our stance. You see this in the pro-black community. You can't be pro-black and Muslim. You can't be pro-black and Christian. You can't be pro-black and it goes on and on and on. But she, she makes some very great points in this video and, and in some other debates that she's had in the past. Her views on, on Cardi B, I 100% I agree with. You know, her views on uh, gender dysphoria, I think there's tons, you know, gender dysphoria is a mental disorder. There's tons of mental disorders out there. There are people that walk around down the street and think they are Superman. You know, think they can, they have powers and they can fly and they're Batman. The, the request of the trans community is not that I'm actually a man, uh, but I want you to pretend I'm a woman. The, the, the argument of the trans community, which I agree with is, no, I am a woman. 
And so I want you to I revert but, to me. But they're, you're, they're not, you're not a woman. So that's, mm. that's the problem. So this is what I say is now you're, you've asked me to, to take on your mental disorder, right? So I am okay with the fact, the, the argument from my uncle who thought he was, he thinks he's a you know, Native American from a certain tribe is that this is what he thinks. He thinks, but he's not. Okay, so I, I'm not then to say to me that that argument is valid because he thinks it. No, just because you think something doesn't make it real. Okay, but that's exactly what gender is. Gender is, is exactly about an experience and a performance and a social construct. It's not a social construct. Stop saying a social construct. To say that words don't have meaning and they're socially constructed means nothing. And I'll tell you well, why. They are, they are. But you say that, but then you'll. Let this, me get, this wasn't always a book. This, okay, this so could then, be called mug. So it then just happens I, not you know to what be. it is? Our entire discussion about Black America meant nothing. There's no such thing as racial injustice. You see what I did there? Because black is a social construct. Yeah, but we live in a social reality. So within that social so reality... You, it can't be both, Mark. So you either sure think that be. the gender wage gap is BS, that feminism is wrong, and that racial disparities are all BS because everything's a social construct. You're either going to go full postmodernist and say nothing is real and it's all made up, or you're going to acknowledge that there are some hard, concrete truths. If there are hard, concrete truths, you and I are black, okay? That's not going to change because... We wake up and we decide, you know what, today I'm white and it's just how I feel and today I'm Chinese. No, 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 you and I are black, okay? I'm not disputing the fact that certain body parts yield certain kinds of possibilities, right? What I'm disagreeing with is the idea that that is the measure of whether or not you're a man or a woman in, in, in society. Okay, but it is now come to a point where if you say that only women can give birth, you are called a bigot. That is crazy. That's nuts. So if you say, like J.K. Rowling did when she got canceled by the Harry Potter cast, that only women can menstruate. I agree with that wholeheartedly. You see this with black people. They are eating this up, thinking that voting early and, and voting in general is how their voices are going to be made known. And I just had to sit here and be like, how do you expect a society, a system that was not created for your best interests? How do you expect your vote to matter exactly? For one, how does your vote matter when your life doesn't matter here? Two, how and who are you supposed to vote for when neither one seeks your best interests? How are you voting for the lesser of two evils if both of them are equally just as evil? This does not make sense to me whatsoever. But because the media tells you to vote, you're going to go out there and vote like sheep. Because the media goes out there and tells you that to, you need to let your voice be known, and if you don't vote, you're dishonoring your ancestors. If you don't vote, you know, you're, you're lazy and all this other type of stuff. But they don't give you the other scenarios. They don't tell you that, oh, there are other ways in which you can express your political views. There are other ways in which you can help black people other than voting. There are other ways in which you can let your voice be known other than voting. And then you get your little sticker. Look, Massa, I was voted. I was voted, Massa. Look at my sticker. Get you a sticker. You over there just smiling. Smiling like a big old coon. We got to do better. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Tyrone. Thank you for watching this video. Comment below about how you feel about what I say. If you like what I say, if you didn't like what I say, let all that be known in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share this video with other people. Until next time. I'm Tyrone, and I am out.